What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another West versus East. I'm your co-host, Anthony, from the Knights of Horror, and I'm here with my other co-host, Eddie, from the amazing Orlando channel, Eddie Tame It, or, you know, East Coast. He's doing a lot of a lot of stuff this uh, Halloween season. Looking forward to that. So uh, without further ado, let's get this video started. Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, so let's get down to it. Uh, a lot of good stuff happened uh, for both uh, coasts. East and West had their moments. Um, let's just get down to a basic overview of the event, starting off with mazes. Now, um, with the mazes, we had a, a list of what we were looking forward to. And now I want to talk about uh, if that if that list has changed, if 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 it lived up to what you expected it to live up to be, um, if you thought a maze was better that you thought wasn't going to be good, um, just go ahead and start off the list with uh, what you think was the best, worst, whatever. Okay, so um, yeah, my my list changed completely, and uh, partly due to biased. I, I probably was so biased about the Halloween house just personally. That I put it at number one. Didn't end up at number one, but still number one in my heart. There you go. But the event did and did not live up to my expectations. It was, I knew it was going to be crazy. I just didn't know how crazy it was going to be. I, I underestimated it. But um, if I have to pick out like my, my favorite house, Poltergeist by Poltergeist, far. Poltergeist by far. Um, yeah, uh, you know what? The the event over here in Hollywood, now I've only gone one time. I'm, gonna go, I'm trying to go, I know for sure I'm going closing night. But I don't know. I'm still scheduling one more night, so I might go two more nights. But um, the event was a lot better than I thought it was gonna be, um, especially because my the the very least uh, favorite mazes that I well they still were on the bottom of my list, but um, they weren't as bad as I thought they were gonna be. Now, first purge, uh, like I always said. Purge in general just needs to be a scare zone. I don't think it deserves to be a maze, uh, but that's just me. Uh, especially if we're getting the entire Purge movie as a maze. I, especially this Purge movie. Like, I, If they were to do maybe all the Purge movies, that's enough content for its own maze. I would have been okay with that. But they just did the first Purge. Um, and don't get me wrong, the movie wasn't bad or anything. I actually really enjoyed the movie, but it was just the fact that this movie had so much little content to work with as a maze that I wish they would have just maybe done all the Purge uh, movies. Um, and same thing with Horrors of Blumhouse. Uh, the two movies that they picked over here on the on the West Coast uh, weren't the best movies, but to bring them into life uh, into a maze was um, it was hard, but it was kind of they made it work out, which was pretty good. And the original ending was so cool. Um, but nonetheless, those were the two that were kind of on my list, and they still are on my list on the very bottom. But they weren't as bad as I thought they were going to be. Yeah. Um, so what I will say, as, as far as like. What ended up not being my favorite, I enjoyed the whole entire event. This year was, it felt pretty special uh, for several reasons, just because how I experienced the event. Oh, uh, speaking of, when did you go? Did you go opening night? Or... I went opening weekend. So I went uh, the first Saturday of the, so like not opening night, but then the second day pretty much. Gotcha. Um, so I ended up going opening night yeah. uh, for the media event. And then I ended up going the opening Saturday weekend. So the first Saturday of, of, uh, of the whole entire event. Um, my least favorite, I don't want to say the worst. I mean, it definitely didn't, didn't live up to it. And I expected it was Blumhouse by far. Um, but I still enjoyed it. The happy death day portion of it wasn't the most entertaining. Uh, but the, the purge portion, surprisingly. So, although I would have preferred it to have been a scare zone, yeah, it was it was decent. I mean, the facade inside the the build was really cool. Not the scariest, but I, I feel like to some degree, just to try to throw them a lifeline, the first purge kind of saved it. Okay. Um, it, it was the the latter end of the of the house. Um, Happy Death Day is what they opened up with. Yeah. Um. So as far as the purge goes, uh, I want to talk a little bit about what was inside your kind of 
Blumhouse maze compared to our maze because um, in our maze it was of course the first perch so they had a lot to work with they could they had all maze they could have worked with so they probably picked a lot of the best scenes from the movie I saw the movie uh, I actually ended up going to the premiere to the movie didn't know I was at the premiere and all the actors were sitting behind me and stuff like that but um, I think that's what made the premiere a lot nice. more exciting for me and stuff like that but um, I, I remember a lot of the key moments of the movie and bringing those moments to life um, was pretty cool to kind of see. Um, so do you remember a lot of what was in your Whores of Blumhouse maze that they, they brought to life? Um, as far as the purge goes, yeah. Um, it was like a street experience. It was it was like you were walking through the streets of the, the first purge. So basically – you see the outside facade on both ends. It's like you're walking kind of through like an alley. Yeah. And on, on both ends, you have buildings and storefronts. Okay. And like it's like, you know, like the the convenience store with like the gated rails on it and everything as you're walking through. Um, and that was the majority of it. Um, I, I think at some point you actually do go inside of a building and you see some of like the glowing eyes. Yeah. But that's not it. Um, okay. Yeah. So they only, uh, yeah, I, cause I know your guys was only like a short portion of it. Our facade was yeah. kind of similar. Uh, it was storefronts and stuff like that. And you go inside the storefront and of course that's when the first perch starts. You see a lot of the infamous character Skeletor, um, throughout the maze. Uh, and he's one of like yeah. the villains that, who goes around just starting to kill people and stuff like that. Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, one of the scenes that they brought to life, which a lot of people were kind of scared that they were going to bring to life, but they know if they were going to do it, they have to do it right. And there's a scene in there where like, there's a bunch of, uh, what are they? White supremacists that go around and shoot up a building. Um, but instead of doing that, they show just one of the, the leader just killing, uh, one of the ladies. So, I mean, it was pretty cool. My cousin was right behind me and he, <laughs> When that part happened, the guy slit the girl's throat and, like, water squirted at my cousin. So he was, like, oh, kind of surprised that happened. Um, and you can't – Eddie can't see me right now, but I am wearing it. The the Purge hat uh, every night at our event, uh, they gave a special code to a, a certain maze. This year it happens to be the first Purge. Uh, and if you give the the act, the scare actor that code um, from Twitter, uh, you get a special prize. This year they're giving out uh, hats and bumper stickers, and I got lucky enough to get a Purge hat. I saw that. That was pretty cool. I saw like the the tweets, and I was like, I was like, damn, I wish I would have known about this. But I don't think they did that at Orlando. But that's pretty cool. Yeah. So um, I'm I'm very thankful for this hat. My cousin got one too. But funny story about my cousin. He thought we have front of the line tickets. So every time you go to a maze, you got to give the ticket to the the person so they can scan it. He thought that the scare actor was the person, and the person kind of just looked at him and go, yeah, that's nice. And then he goes, oh, you're the guy with the code. Okay, I know the code. And then he gave him the code and gave him the hat. So um, nice. I was just kind of laughing at that. So. Uh, uh, speaking of that, let, let's uh, interject right there. You said you went with your cousin. So was your cousin the only person that you went with to experience the event? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, every year, me and him, we go opening weekend. Um, he's kind of like my my my, uh, my sidekick on it, you know. Nice. <laughs> uh, George, he's one. Of, he's like the, one of the guys who uh, helped me start this channel. Um, he's not really in the, the, the channel a lot, but he's a lot of behind the scenes and stuff like that. So he goes with me every year. Um, so... Yeah, I think he, I saw him in your TLV, TLEV video, right? Yeah, he, he was in the TLEV video. Uh, he was at the Jurassic Park. Um, you saw him. He doesn't like to come out in the videos too much, but when he does, it's just stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it, it was cool, though. Yeah, he, we always go every year. Uh, last year, we went opening night. I was going to go opening night this year, but due to me having to work, um, I couldn't make it. So maybe next year, I'll probably try to do opening night again. Nice. So... I went the first night by myself and then the because I was doing like the, the media tour portion and I couldn't get a ticket for my girlfriend. Yeah. The second night I went with my girlfriend, uh, my nephew because it was his birthday and my my nephew's dad. And that's one of the things that I try to do every single year is I try to bring around, along somebody who's never been. Yeah. Because uh, it's one of the ways that like I feel like I could revisit the experience of my first time by observing somebody else experiencing it their first time so all three of them actually were new to the, new to the event my girlfriend didn't actually want to go up till they announced stranger things and my nephew just turned 14 so he was really young up till just recently and his dad doesn't really like horror movies but they all had a good time that's cool uh and that's a good transition uh probably i i so i didn't watch the orlando version yet i, I gotta go over and watch it but that's probably the maze that stole both events which was stranger things yeah um 
so uh, and that's and that's one of the mazes where I was just like, wow, they did a, a phenomenal job on this. I I cannot believe how much um effort and time they put into this. This is really good. Not saying they never put enough effort and time in their mazes, but just the amount of they look like they went like another whole step than they usually do in the in the previous years I've seen and. To see them bring a lot of the iconic scenes to life, uh, it, it just was it was it was really cool. Um, a fun story I want to I want to tell is when I was going through that maze, like right before I entered, uh, the guy who designs all this stuff, Chris Williams, who you see is a lot of the face of the of the Horn Knights, him and John Murdy, um, he was at the maze and I got to shake his hand and meet him. He, he was a really nice guy. He looked like he was very thankful, very happy that um, everybody was enjoying the event. So that was really cool. Yeah. Um, but I have to say, I I really this what this and Universal Monsters it was a really hard pick this year because they were both phenomenal mazes and um, I I it was really hard to pick. But in the end, uh, Universal Monsters took my my number one spot. But nonetheless, Stranger Things was awesome, and I hope they bring it back in the event in the future. Yeah, I saw the Universal walkthrough that TLV uh, put put up the Universal Monsters walkthrough. Yeah. Um, uh, I gotta say, I I wish I could go through that house. Hopefully, they they bring it back next year, and I I get an opportunity to visit. But yeah, Stranger Things, man, um, they are completely responsible for how freaking crowded it was. Um, I was thinking that the Saturday that I went with my girlfriend, my nephew, and his dad, that I wouldn't need Speed Pass because it's opening weekend. So if it's gonna be slow, that's the slowest time of the year. Yeah, right. no, yeah. it was. Re- this. If you watched my my video of the the media night, as soon as I walked in, the stay and scream line for Stranger Things had already gone to 120 minutes. Yeah, uh, same here. Uh, throughout the entire night, that and Poltergeist, 150, 120. Um, yeah, ridiculous. So I was tripping out on that, uh, and I knew a majority. I knew it was going to be really crowded this year because. Um, the the second time I'm supposed to be going, I, I thought about just getting general mission, but then I started seeing the lines for Stranger Things. It was like a three hour wait, and I was like, yeah. I am not doing that. So I might just buy another express pass again, uh, just to go through. Um, but yeah, this is this was a smart decision by both uh, Universal Orlando and Hollywood to bring Stranger Things, one of the most popular sci fi horror TV shows uh, on uh, television today. Uh, to the event because that drove in so much money for them. Um, that's like the face of both events this year. That's what a lot of the merchandise is. I actually bought one of the uh, Stranger Things uh, Halloween Horror Nights lanyards this year because they look so cool. Um, and and I was told they only made like five thousand of them this year, so that that's pretty cool. They're limited edition. So this is the the pass that they gave us at the media. Event. Yeah. See. So there you go. Right there. It just proves that Stranger Things was like the face of the. Uh, the the event this year it was just insane more houses Rupert. than ever present there you go so uh that's awesome though you got to go to the media event i'm hoping next year like tlev i think it's a little bit harder to get in the media event uh over here because they do a whole red carpet and we have so many celebrities that 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 stop by the event that it's, it's really hard to get in and i was really surprised when um so i'm gonna go on a limb here and say i kind of knew early on that they were gonna go to uh uh the uh the media event, um, uh, and I kind of always just kind of suspected it. I was like, you guys are getting big, and you guys uh, are getting pretty well-known with the media stuff, and I wouldn't be surprised if you guys were at the red carpet at uh, Horror Nights, and then next thing you know, they kind of were at the uh, the uh, event. But that's really cool of them. To, so it's a little bit harder to get into the media event, and our media event isn't like yours, where I, I kind of like the way your guys' media event goes compared to ours. Like, you guys have a whole buffet, you guys have a whole yeah. intro of each maze, um, then you guys go on, like, a, a, a tour and stuff like that. With the media at our thing, it's, like, the red carpet, celebrities, uh, interviews, and then you go into the park. And then, like, what TLEV, TLEV did with the, the lighting and the, and the camera and everything, that's b- basically all you do. You go around the park yourself, no no guided tour or anything. Yeah, that their their coverage was cool, and it's it's interesting to see how different two media events are. But I, I don't know how how difficult it is to get access to either media event. But I, I gotta say, I was I was just lucky because I was probably by far one of like the smallest media presence. <laughs> no, yeah, the- that that's awesome though. <laughs> Getting media at this at this low right now, and then and then hopefully getting in the future, just keep doing it. Um, that's yeah. what's definitely going to make you grow too. 
because um, a lot of people want to see what the media event and stuff was, and that's why I think TLA, uh, TLAV, um, so they've, they've grown, and this was the first year they did media, and I hope they get to do it every year because uh, just to see them on the red carpet talking to uh, a lot of the directors, producers, celebrities, and stuff, that was just insane. I think you're going to see Thomas like in the next few months on like Channel 7 News reporting. <sighs> You know what? And Thomas is like he he. I think he's going to school to become a public speaker and stuff like that. So I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, so, nice. uh, but yeah, Stranger Things, man, it was just it was insane. Um, and I really hope they bring it back next year for season two. Um, they will. It's gonna be an awesome promotional for season three as well because I think season three is supposed to come out either next summer or next October. Um, so that that's gonna be perfect time for promotional. So, um, yeah. What about uh, Trigger Treat? So this year, uh, it was it was a maze for you guys. Last year, it was a scare zone. We got it both this year. What did you think? Amazing. Um, so probably number three on my on my list, um, and only because the number one and number two are really strong. Um, there there was a couple things about Trick or Treat that were awesome. Um, just a transition between different uh, scenes in the movie, yeah, and actually getting to walk through the rock quarry. Um, and see the bus crash there, and like they they had put like mirrors in the grass, so it looks like you were in water. Oh, nice. um, it was really cool. Um, on top of that, while we were getting the the private tour, our tour guide let us know that this is the first time, at least for Orlando. I don't know if she was speaking for both um, Hollywood and Orlando, but at least for Orlando, she said that this is the first time that they've done full to scale uh, size houses inside of a building, like an enclosure. Oh, okay, so when like. You other facades within the the maze, right? Or like other sceneries and stuff? Correct, correct. So like you walk through kind of like the, you're kind of walking through like the neighborhood and there's houses on either side yeah. and they're massive. And it's the first time that they've made them that massive. They're actually to scale to what a house would be on a regular road. I guess usually what they do is they do like, you know, kind of like angling trickery to make it seem larger. Mm -hmm. This time around, they use no trickery. They actually made it to scale. Wow. Um, yeah, I think we've had it in, in the past, not with houses, but with like certain scenes of, from movies. Um, and they did something similar to that this year at, uh, for, for our, for our maze, we, we're, we're famous for having facades within facades and they did it last year with, uh, uh, one of the most famous ones that you can go look up on YouTube, uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead. Um, mm -hmm. in our maze, we had a scene transition from season one to season two where you see Ash's, uh, house. And it's, oh, a, nice. it's, it's a full-scale house and everything, and that's another facade transitioning to season uh, by season. So that was cool. But this year for Trick or Treat, they did the, – the rock quarry looked really cool. It looked like a big, giant, massive hill, and the bus was right there, and you saw a lot of the kids come out and stuff. Um, when you see the yeah. principal's house, he was sitting on top of the, the staircase with the, with the kid. He was throwing up and stuff like that. That was really cool. In the beginning, the very beginning sequence, you walk through uh, the facade for our place was, of course, the uh, the the first um, the first the first thing you see in the movie, which is when the girl gets killed by Sam and hung up to uh, by the you know the sheets and stuff. And that's the facade is her house, and then you see a lot of those sheet figures outside. Then you walk yeah. inside, and it's like a yard, and then you see her hanging right there, and it's actually a scare actress. And then you see Sam who pops out at the same time. So that was cool. Um, the principal's house was just probably the best part of the entire maze though, because that was another full scale set, um, facade. And then you walk in and, you know, he comes out with a shotgun trying to kill, kill, uh, Sam. And then you turn the corner and when you look up on the ceiling, Sam's upside down, like in the movie and stuff. And it, it was just a really good maze. And I really, I think they put a lot of good detail into it. And I'm, I'm really yeah. just glad that to experience that movie. Cause I, I love that movie. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, as I hear you speaking about it, it sounds very similar, but we didn't have it in the same order. order but we yeah. had, we had everything that you said. Yeah. Um, the principal with the shotgun, Sam at the top of the steps. Um, another thing that, that our tour guide told us was um, Sam's in every single scene. Yeah. And depending on the night that you go, sometimes he's real and sometimes he's not. So um, they continually change that up to give you a different approach if you're returning to the event. That's uh that's cool. I don't I know that Sam's in every single scene for our maze as well. I just don't know if it's gonna be an actor or a scare actor or uh, just a prop. That might be true for this one too. Um, a lot of thing something that's famous over here in Hollywood is they get a lot of the uh, actors who will come and uh, be a character in the maze of the movie they were in. Uh, James Franco did it one year for This Is the End. Um, yeah. 
who did it another year. I think someone did it for The Shining one year, too. Uh, someone that was pretty big. I don't remember. I think it was Jane Franco again. He did something for The Shining uh, and stuff like that. So I'm hoping. Yeah, I think I saw I saw him with the bald cap. Yeah, so I'm hoping uh, one year or maybe this year they actually get the actor who played Sam, which the the league who did they did interview at the event. Yeah, he's, he's a lot older and stuff. It'd be cool he's to see tall him. Now. <laughs> yeah, he's tall and old, so it'd be it'd be cool to see him. Just like he's grown up, Sam's grown up, and this is what he's still doing, you know. So yeah. kind of like connects to the story in a way. So yeah, that was cool. Um, and our scare zone was awesome. I really enjoyed the scare zone a lot too. It was just they had the bus, and then they had the kids inside the bus. The bus was open. Sam was standing in front of the bus, and then you had a lot of the characters running around and stuff, which was really cool. Um, yeah. what... so you you guys got the scare zone and the house. We just got the house, but, but I gotta say the the scare zone that replaced trick or treat for us. And I forget the name. I was about to like pull it up, but it it was very reminiscent of a, a trick or treat scare zone. So I feel like we got it anyway. Oh, you're talking about the harvest, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. It had, like, the rotting pumpkins, which it, it was really cool. There was actually, like, a human carcass coming out of one of the rotting pumpkins. Wow. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think I watched a lot of the Scare Zones because I was very jealous of Vamp 85. Uh, that was that looked amazing. Uh, and I just loved, I just love the whole 80s theme. They came out and did Thriller every now and then when the ball dropped. Yeah. And, and that was really cool. And then, um, of course, you know which Scare Zone over there was my all-time favorite, which I, I, I think it should have gotten a much bigger location than where it was. Sure. But nonetheless, what, where the, what they did and what they had with it was, was phenomenal. The, the clowns look – and, I'm, of course, I'm talking about Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Oh, um, Killer Clowns? That's your favorite? Yeah. Oh, well, you know. Oh. I didn't be. know that. Uh, you know, I was talking about Trick or Treat, so that was also not <laughs> that. Uh, no, but, yeah, Killer Clowns was – probably one of the best scare zones over there talk to me about the experience of of that scare zone so first and foremost you want my my early prediction here yeah and for start i know we're going all over the place right now but there were certain moments and certain times of so i know we're jumping from scare zones to, to mazes back to scare so yeah i want to i want to just hear because this is the one I, I i was really like i wanted to hear the most opinion about so uh first and foremost the, the the opening night of the media event i i sent you a tweet with with a picture of the scare zone yeah um i knew you'd like that but um my first prediction is just like uh trick-or-treat being a scare zone and then being turned into a house the same thing will happen with killer clowns because it was I awesome it. i don't doubt it even murdy was teasing it at midsummer scream and mike ella was kind of agreeing with him so i was like Murdy, if you say that and then next year we don't get it, you're gonna crush my heart. <laughs> yeah. So it it was it was super dope. Um, yeah. I mean, just walking through it, seeing these guys in real life, and they they were massive. Yeah. They're, they're were huge. I mean, if you if you watch Awkward Arsic, I, I don't think he posted anything about it, but he posted some vi uh, not videos. He posted some pictures. Yeah. And you see the pictures of, of these guys. They're massive. When you're walking next to them, they're massive. You see the con the the cotton candy cocoons. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the music no. plan. So I keep so there's one cotton candy cocoon that's infamous in the movie where they they showed the reveal the face, and <laughs> me being a super fucking nerd of that movie, a fan, I every time someone panned the camera with that, I I kept repeating the line the guy says in the movie, it's Joe Lombardo, oh my god. <laughs> so I was just kind of nerding out watching that uh watching that whole thing. Yeah, the clown and awkward Arsic is a tall guy. He's about as yeah. tall as I am, maybe. A little bit shorter, but he's in the six foot range. So you, that tells you how tall those th those clowns were. Six foot club. Six foot club. That's what's up. Um, <laughs> but no, awkward. Yeah, he's a tall guy, and those clowns, they just the. But I cannot believe how scary they looked. Like they did a phenomenal job of making them actually look pretty scary. Um, and that was oh, really cool. Who was there? What's up? Guess who was there? You. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, I was there, but no. The dude with the with the gloves. Yeah, I saw that. And I was so jealous. I was like, "Oh, dude, you need to knock some blocks off, man." Yeah. Awesome. Oh, and remember we talked about this. I was I was saying, how cool would it be if they actually were doing the hand puppets? They yeah. were doing it. I saw that too, man. And I was just yeah. like, "Oh my god, that's so cool." Um, how how did the animation? I know you didn't get to see it very what, much on media night, but how was the animation for the ship taking off? I didn't get to see it at all. At all? Okay. Damn. Yeah. The, the second night was a struggle to get through the 10 houses, even with speed pass. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they they definitely didn't position the Killer Clowns of outer from outer space 
in a good location for you to actually experience it as you're moving casually through the event yeah. because it's actually central and all the houses kind of like circle. Yeah. So you could easily go through the whole entire event trying to go, you know, like if, if you walk into the, into the park and you say, I'm just going to go right and go through everything as I walk through in a circle, you would miss killer towns from outer space completely. Man, and, and, and we're really, and I, and okay, and I could tell this was one of the biggest scare zones at the event this year, or if yeah. not the biggest one, because as little as that area was, every video that I've watched about that scare zone, that place was crowded nonstop. Yeah. It was crowded. It was like you could barely walk through the damn thing. Yeah. Um, and you, there was you, people you taking. To go there. Yeah, I, I wanted to go there so bad. You don't even know. I was just, I was watching yeah. your video. I was watching. I think like the actual media night that same night, someone posted up the scare zone or employee preview night, and I watched it immediately. And I was like, I am just in love with this scare zone. I would live there. And I and I keep saying, if the event, if it comes to the event next year, that's it. I'm going every night. I don't care. <laughs> scare zone maze. I'll go through that maze every night I go. Yeah. So I mean, I I have a strong inkling, given the the reception of it, that. It will be returning in some form next year. Yeah. And uh, Mike Aiello and all the guys there that were talking about it were like fanboying about the scare zone that they created as if they were experiencing it for the first time too. And they were the ones that created it. Yeah, that that, that was probably the best scare zone at your guys' event. Um, I just – I thought the clowns looked amazing. They even had the two brothers from the ice cream truck. That was funny. Um, they played the iconic score and the iconic theme song from the movie, yeah. which I thought was so – that's exactly what I wanted. I even tweeted Mike the, like the week before. I'm like, hey, are you going to play the score and the song? I was like, because if you don't, it's going to make the it's gonna make the scare zone bad. But yeah. they played the song every like 30 minutes or so, and that was cool. And then they played the score throughout the entire uh, <clears throat> night, which was really cool. And, yeah, I, I, I thought the ma they didn't – it didn't disappoint. It was awesome. Yeah. So, and that's – Continue with the way that we're going, which is completely random. Yeah. And talk about the shows. Uh, so I know you guys got Jabberwockies. How how was that? Did you get to, or did you actually even go to it? No, I watched it. It was, okay. <laughs> it was one of those things. After the terror trap, me and my cousin were like, it, "It's hot. Let's go sit down in some AC and just chill." Um, for starters, my cousin was on his phone the most of the time, so I kind of expected that. Uh, yeah. And I was kind of in an area where, like, I was in this, like, corner where, like, there was a wall on one, like, on my right side and the wall that I can lean back on. So I was kind of, like, getting all comfortable and stuff. Um, so this year's show was called Jabberwockies Presents Connected. So what happens is there's this guy who uh, is, um, he's like another, he's like a virus in a way, and he shuts down Wi-Fi and stuff. So the Jabberwockies had to try to turn back on the Wi-Fi. And um, it, it honestly feels like the same routine every year. I'm just kind of getting like a little done with Jabberwockies, um, and I want something new. So at this point, I didn't really get, I didn't really care, not nor to really pay attention to the show. Like I, there was like a couple songs that that hit me out of nowhere where I was like, "Oh, this is America." Yeah, I like that song, so I'll listen yeah. to it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, a guy who listens to mostly like metal and and stuff like that, it's just, like it's hard for me to kind of watch these kind of shows because I just don't know any of these songs. So it's like. <laughs> Um, but nonetheless, these guys, they know how to dance and stuff. There's one cool part I will say though, in the show where the guy, he has this part where he's like playing with laser lights and stuff and he's like moving them with the, with his hands and stuff. And it just looks really cool how they do it. Shut so, up. No. Yeah. He, there's like lasers that pop out like lights, um, that surround him in like a circle and like he's moving them back and forth with his hands and it just looks trippy. That's like, I, that sounds like what we experienced at Halloween Horror Nights with Academy of Villains. Is yeah. that your I, so I watched the show and I watched and I was and I was and I was looking at it and I was like, this is kind of similar to to Jabberwockies, not like the the same exact thing, but like it's a dance show, just like the Jabberwockies. But um, no, so I saw how they do. Yeah, so I saw how they did that, um, and it wasn't it wasn't anything like that. He had it was he was on a podium and the the the, the lights were shooting up from the podium. He didn't have any gloves or uh. anything on. Okay, so, okay. um, it was like a circle, circular podium. So the lights would go all the way around him. So he would play with them with his hands and move them back and forth and oh, okay. like, kind of okay. shift them and stuff. Like if I can find some footage, it's, it's really hard to get footage of a Jabberwocky show. Cause you'll, you'll easily get copyrighted because of all the music. But, um, if, if you can find some footage on the internet and look at that scene, that scene alone is pretty cool. Interesting. 
Um, is that the only show you guys got? That was the only show we had. Okay. Um, so ours, as you know, was Academy of Villains. And it was nice to get something refreshing. I, I was a huge fan of Bill and Ted, but the latter years, I, I will say I didn't really enjoy their show too much anymore. They had kind of like lost their step, even though it, it was still something that I always made like a, I always made a, an effort to go watch. Um, it it didn't resonate as well as it did with the earlier years of me going to Halloween Horror Nights. Maybe I just grew up and the jokes weren't the same anymore. Um, but it was nice seeing something refreshing. And as, as I just showed you a little clip, they, they did some pretty cool things with like laser lights on their gloves and their yeah. finger. Um, which that portion alone, I wasn't going to record at all. Uh, just because certain things in the event, I was like, you know what? I just want to enjoy it. I don't want to sit here, you know, shooting video and then, you know, catch somebody on the side of my eye looking at me oddly like, what's this guy doing? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I also, another thing, I got to watch this sitting right next to Mike Aiello and his son. That's cool. Which was, yeah. Um, and I didn't even know that, like, somebody had told me Mike Aiello was at the media event. Completely missed him. Um, at least for the early presentation, because he didn't he didn't go up, up on stage and actually present. Yeah. Uh, um, so somebody told me he was there, and I was like, oh, darn, I missed him. I probably won't see him the whole entire night. Walking in, and I'm just like walking, walking, walking. There's somebody in front of me. I look up, Mike Aiello, and he's getting into the same lane as me, and I'm like, what the hell? And I, and I, you know, I'm the type of guy that, although I'm fanboying inside, I try not to bother people. Yeah. So all I said was like, hey, Mike, I really, I really appreciate the work that you do. And he said, thanks, man. He like grabbed my hand, like to shake my hand and kind of like embraced me and said, I hope you really enjoy the event. Uh-huh. And I was like, I was like, oh, my God, this guy's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah Murdy and, and Williams are like the same exact way. And that's what makes me happy when like they're not they're not guys who like, yeah, I do this event. So what? They're guys who are like just as big as fans as ours and will appreciate the comments because they know that what they're doing is is good and they know people are just like them who are appreciating the yeah. event. So that that's what I like about people like them is like they don't they're not like all like oh we're corporate we uh we created this event we're making tons of money they're like no we're fans of this we're bringing it to life so other fans can experience it just like us and it's like that's awesome I, I really think that's cool um, yeah Academy of Villains looks looks pretty dope though it'd be one of those shows where I want to see it at least once um just to kind of see and stuff like that and. And, and it really pisses me off, too, is, like, they got a really bad rep from someone one time. I think they went on, like, a dance show, and, like, someone said they sucked or something like that. But from what I've seen, they look pretty good. So it's, like, I don't know. I look at it this way. I, I can't do the moves that they do. So. Yeah, I can't. I, I know I can't. <laughs> I, I'm not going to trash them. Um, I probably won't watch them a million times over and over, but it was enjoyable, and they did some pretty cool things. They're acrobatic, for sure. All right, so we're going to go back to uh, two mazes uh, in the next two. First one I want to talk about, thoughts on Halloween 4. He could do no wrong. And what I will say is the second night around, so the first night I went through, I actually was able to film the whole entire thing. I'm not allowed to post the whole entire thing. I could just post clips here and there. Uh, But for every house, I was actually able to film all the way through. That's the only one that I actually filmed all the way through because it was the only one that I really cared to film all the way through. Yeah. Um, the second night around, it was even better. I don't know if it was just like me fanboying out, but I feel like they like had a second wind and did much better. So it's the only house that I could actually say that for too. Um, the rest of the houses were all basically the same first night, first night around. If they were awesome, they were awesome the second night around. Um, if they were, if they weren't the best, they weren't the best the second night around either. Halloween was good the first time around and even better the second time. Um, the the scenes that you go through, you get to see him all bandaged, bandaged up. You get to walk through like the same uh, asylum before he actually escapes. Um, see other inmates, or I guess you, I don't know if you call them inmates. Um, patients. Patients. Yeah. Of, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> patients of the of the like insane asylum. Um, you walk through the house. It, it was it, it was done very well. I know most people were saying that Halloween Four is not the most impressive, but yeah, um, I love you. guys. Screw you guys, too. <laughs> yeah. I will say Halloween 4 is not my favorite movie. However, I thought The Maze did a really good job. Um, yeah. And they brought a lot of the iconic scenes to life. I will say, though, they didn't show a lot of Jamie in our maze, which I was a little kind of mad about. They showed yeah. her like once or twice, but I would have loved to see her more, especially in the clown costume. 
Um, and one of the most iconic scenes in Halloween 4, uh, spoilers if you haven't seen Halloween 4, but it's been so long, I don't see how you haven't yet, but, um, Halloween 4 at the very end in the, uh, most iconic scene when then it kind of messes it up in the sequel is they show Jamie pretty much kind of like kill her mom, but, and then Loomis goes crazy, but then like at the, and then the, like the next movie they say that Jamie didn't kill her mom and it was, a, so it's, it's kind of confusing situation, but I would have loved to see that scene where like Jamie's killing her mom at the end. Uh, in a different point of view, which I liked that they did a lot. Uh, another example of different point of, points of views was um, in Horrors of Blumhouse Chapter 2. Uh, we had Unfriended, and if you know Unfriended, that whole movie takes place during a Skype chat, so it's like pretty much like recording the screen the entire movie, so you don't really get to see a lot of the kills. But I feel in the maze, we got to see a different point of view of the kills outside of the Skype chat. We got to be in the room while they were getting killed or something like that, which I thought was cool. I would have liked to see that in the maze for Halloween 4 when you see Jamie killing her mom. You get to see it in a point of view because in the movie, all you see is it through her eyes and her mask, uh, killing mm. her mom, much like Michael Myers in the first movie. So um, that was really cool, and I really wish they kind of would have incorporated that scene in a different point of view into the maze. But Whatever you said is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's wrong, yeah. No, but um, yeah, yeah, they did a good I'm job. Like can we go back so I could trash talk killer clowns really quick? Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, no, but I will say this, though. The rest of the maze was awesome. Um, Penny's Diner, was that was probably one of my favorite scenes. Yeah. Um, and it was cool the way they did our uh, reveal for when they first when Loomis first sees Michael Myers. I love that the way they did it. Um, they did much like The Shining they did last year. Um, so they had like a, a, full, a, a wall, and it was like a – it was one of those things where they showed Michael Myers and he'll disappear – so it was one okay. of those kind of like effects, and I really liked how they did that because in the movie, if you guys know, Loomis sees Michael Myers, says, you know, you know, just take me, don't even bother going to Haddonfield, uh, and he sees him in the bandage in the jumpsuit, and then he when he when he shoots him, the next camera shot, he's just gone. So I thought that when they brought that to life in the maze, that was really cool. Another cool scene that they it was a huge scene was um, the scene where Michael Myers electrocutes the the one guy in the the power station. Um, mm -hmm. And that was really cool to see that they brought that to life too, and I and I really thought that looked cool. Um, yeah. So yeah, how did how did your guys as as far as layout wise go? It was it was about the same thing, or was there a couple different? How was your guys' facade too? Like, what was your guys' facade for that? So it didn't really have a facade because for us it was in the Shrek building. Okay. Um, I guess it did have like an interior facade, which was like an en the entrance to the to the uh, insane asylum, oh, okay. but that was basically about it. And it was like really quick. Cause like you go through the, through the side door of the large Shrek building, which is all Shrek themed on, on the outside. And then you kind of are right there at the entrance already. And there's like a little like check-in front desk and you hear in the speakers, somebody talking about the night when Michael Myers escaped. Oh, okay. Yeah. So our, our facade was pretty cool. It was the Penny's diner from the actual movie that you see where Michael Myers first goes and I think he, that's one of his first kills or something like that. It's one of the kills early on in the movie. Um, and it's the scene where Loomis first sees Michael, but that was a cool facade. It was like, it was like a huge facade. I think it was one of the biggest facades they've ever made for, uh, the event thus far because it was the garage and then it was the diner entrance. And then you walked in and then there was a car mechanic was under the car dead, of course. And then Michael Myers in his like patient suit bandaged up pops out. So the, it was really cool. And I really enjoyed the maze overall though. I thought the I honestly, I thought the maze was better than the movie. And that's a, that's kind of a, I mean, I'm not a big fan of that movie. So yeah. So, uh, yeah. Killer clown sucks. And whatnot. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm not saying Halloween shit in general. I'm just saying that movie, the four through six I'm timeline good, is good. just, is just out of, is out of, I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I I probably would agree with you. I probably would say that the 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 house did it a, did better justice than the movie did. Uh, I mean, I'm not blind. I know which which Halloween movies were good and which ones <laughs> don't really live up to the hype. Um, but I enjoy them regardless. It's like one of those things where I just I just take it as like you know this is like the funny one of the of yeah. the series. Um, I just didn't like the mask in there because there's one point where you can actually see the pink from the mask that they try to paint over, and it was just. Yeah. What are you doing? Um, but uh, transitioning that, what do you think about uh, Poltergeist? Awesome. I don't know how how yours was, but I'll tell you how mine starts off. So basically, you walk into 
uh, ours was in a sound stage. Mm -hmm. So you walk into the sound stage, it's dark, but you could you could see like the flash of lightning, you hear the 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 actual like thunder and you're walking through and it's raining. You're feeling the rain, you look up and boom, there's the house. You're looking up at the house from like the 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 hole that they dug where the pool was. Oh nice. Yeah, and wow. then um, Universal Studios, I'm sure in Hollywood they do the same thing. They're really good about like smells, incorporating yeah. smells. Yeah. So you're walking through what what is basically wet dirt, and that's the smell that you get. You get it like hard. You actually feel like you're walking through like wet dirt, and you're kind of walking through like a trench um, with dirt on on either side, and there's like caskets sticking out from the side wow. with like parts hanging out and like. Some of them actually like move and try to like grab you. Uh, as you're going through that trench, you start to go up a little bit, and um, and the, the house. As you look up at the house, you can see that something's going on in the house. There's like lights going off, and like it looks like things are moving. Um, and then you walk through through a room, and you see the little girl with her hands on the, the on the screen. yeah the iconic scene that i was actually the iconic wondering scene about. it's in the poster you know it you should know it that's what i that's what iconic that's what the iconic poltergeist that's what that's what makes poltergeist right there that's the iconic scene that makes it right there yeah and then um you see her and you could hear her disembodied voice like talking and then she says they're here yeah and you walk in the first thing that you walk into is the kitchen and in the kitchen there's like things moving around there's some like the the kitchen tables like kind of like flipped to the side and it was it was a really like wide room like you had a lot of like area they actually had like a full kitchen built out with like a kitchen island and on the left hand side was the dining table um the dining table was kind of like flipped there was a scare actor hiding behind there then you go through like the hallways you see the, the the little clown attacking the boy, and the boy's like, "Get off me! Get off me!" You know, help! help. Um, you see some of like the demons from that other world, and then um, you kind of enter that other world for for a bit. Yeah, um, yeah. You, wow, your guy, just your entrance alone just sounded awesome. Um, it was. Uh, yeah, that that sounds really cool. Yeah, that was nothing compared to our entrance. I mean, your your entrance was was better than ours, I would say. Um, but our entrance, our facade, obviously was was the house, um, and they did very good job full scale to the house. If you guys don't know, the actual house is here in in I think uh, in the in the valley area out in Los Angeles. Um, like Thomas's neighbors. Yeah, Thomas used to live right there. Or I think he still maybe does live right there. But um, yeah, he lives right by the actual Poltergeist house, and so um, they they did a phenomenal job bringing that house to life. And the facade was really cool. At, at some points. They had they had this lighting system, so it, it would light down on the on the house, and it looked like thunder and, and lightning just flashing at the uh, the house. And then the freaking house would just go like the lights would start flickering, like in the movie does when he pulls up uh, at the very end. The dad pulls up, and then he sees the house, and it's going crazy and stuff like that. That's exactly what it would do like every like five ten minutes. So that was pretty cool. Uh, of course, then you enter the house, and the first thing you do see is the girl with the TV. And then on the wall, you kind of see like a swirly. Uh, like thing like a kind of twilight zone kind of thing but it's like you know to enter the the poltergeist world but uh the the front room looked amazing and she's it, it was just a, a like a kind of dummy just sitting right there uh she had her hands on the tv and she said We're, they're here and all that uh when you turn the corner you go down this dark hallway and it it's like a projection of a static and then uh they had a character like uh kind of shoot out their hand like it was a ghost trying to get you and stuff like that which looked pretty cool then of course you went through the kitchen and then you saw the the steak move um, with the like the eyeball in it or something like that with the, the, all the guts and gore of the steak that was moving on the table and then you saw of course the uh, the maggots with the um, with the chicken on it on the floor uh, just little details that you saw of course the the all the tables and the chairs were were set up like how they were and then you when you go into the next room you actually see that guy who was in the kitchen eating the food um he's peeling off his face and stuff like that and then he turns around and he reveals himself and it just it looks just as cheesy as it does in the movie and i and i thought that was awesome they stuck to the their roots they stuck to the movie and i and i thought it, it came out awesome of course then you go and you you go throughout the uh, the different scenes in the movie there's like there's like one area that was just nothing but black walls but um I gave it a pass just because I know Poltergeist didn't have a lot of content to kind of uh, fill that area, and they were trying to stretch it out to, to make as much as they can, 
which I respected. Then you see, of course, the tree scene, the clown scene. Um, they had a big, giant um, – it's in my intro now, a lot of my videos, but it's a big, giant head of the, of the ghost that pops out of you. They had, like, two of those, and then they had the giant demon and stuff like that. The clown looked cool. Uh, and at the very end, they had the bodies. They played one of my favorite scenes from the whole movie. It says uh, – you son of a bitch, you moved the cemetery and the tombstones, but you didn't move the bodies and stuff. So you hear that as, oh, you're, going, as you're going through to see all the bodies that look cool. So that was really awesome, and I really thought that it was a, a fantastic maze, really well put together. That that little scene where you hear him saying that is at the entrance of ours, like while it's raining and everything. Yeah. And I'm a huge fan of houses that use elements. So like you're, in, you're inside of a soundstage and it's raining or snowing, that's yeah. always – Always to me, that's like probably the the most mind blowing portion of a, of any of our houses. And I think that's what it was for me with Stranger Things, because Stranger Things took place in a soundstage, so they made it really cold. Um, so that was cool. And the scene where you transition to go inside the upside down looks so freaking amazing. And yeah, I love soundstage mages. They they've done them with uh, Black Sabbath when we had it. Uh, we did Alien vs. Predator two years in a row, and they did it with inside of the sound, soundstage. And then Stranger Things was inside of the soundstage. So I really thought they – I love soundstage mages because you can control weather, um, make it darker, make it lighter, however you know you want to make the scene, and it's awesome. Yeah. Um, so then you have a lot of uh, – original mazes that we should talk about because i want to hear a lot of what you thought of those mazes okay um let's see we'll start off with dead exposure um so for the most part dead exposure and slaughterhouse cinema were high up there on my list and did very well at delivering their concept um dead exposure you're walking through it is dark as hell. You first you first walk in, and it looks like a quarantined area where you're walking through, and they have this like basically like this smoke coming from like the ceiling, and there's somebody speaking saying that that's a basically some type of inoculation to prevent you from becoming a zombie, and but you may experience temporary like sensory defects, which one of them is going blind. Um, then you walk into, into the, the house and it's dark as hell. And what they did was they incorporated like glow in the dark paint to basically expose the, or not glow in the dark paint. It's like fluorescent paint yeah. with, with bright lighting. It, it basically, it, it gets bright. Um, but basically you go through and that fluorescent paint is put on the things that they want you to see. And then the rest of it is kind of like blacked out. So you walk through, you see skulls that are on the wall. You see, there's these actors that are like hiding that are uh, like zombies. So it's it's basically oh and um, at a, at a certain portion of it, it was really cool. So uh, I can't remember where Patient Zero took place, uh, but either one of those places, you actually see like the scenes of what people were doing at that time before the whole outbreak. I like that. I like when they yeah. uh, they have a backstory to it. That, that's much like uh like Fear the Walking Dead in a way. You got to see what they were doing as the zombie apocalypse uh broke out and uh, Dead Exposure looked awesome from the footage I saw from your video. Um it was yeah. very little but it looked really good. Um and they did a they do a really good job on their original mazes which was pretty cool. Um yeah. Yeah, that sounded that sounds really cool. Actually, I, I, that's one of the reasons why I want to go to Orlando is because of the original mazes. Yeah, and I think Awkward Arctic was there this past weekend. Yeah, uh, with, uh, his girlfriend. Yeah, that's right. Because they they're huge Killer Clowns fans. So yeah, and uh, then uh, then you have Slaughterhouse Cinema, which when you're walking up, they have like the the screen playing like all these B horror movies, which are so corny it's not even funny. Um, the, you know, the Devil Baby and. Yeah, he's to get you, and like it has that cheesy voice. Um, but when you walk in, the the way that they set everything up was really cool. So basically, you walk into a room, which is kind of like it has that that voice, basically talking about the preview, like coming this fall, da 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 da. And then you see like the the like poster for it, and then you actually walk through that house. Then the 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 next one you go through another room with like a little announcement thing majigger then you walk through that house um and they were all like corny and cheesy but in the best way 
Yeah, it, and that's what I like about that is like it's a corny, cheesy thing, but they actually looked really scary. A lot of the creatures yeah. and stuff like that. Um, how many movies did they do? Like three or four, right? Or just two? yeah, roughly. Yeah, okay. Uh, and it looked really cool. It was like in a, it was in, a, it was in a, a like a like an old school like drive-in cinema and stuff like that. And then you're going through all these different um, movies and stuff that are just all made up, but they they have they have cheesy titles and stuff. But when you walk through them, they're actually pretty scary and stuff, which looked pretty cool. And um, I thought that that looked awesome. Um, yeah. That was one of the mazes on my, if I were to go to Orlando, that I definitely wanted to check out. Um, yeah. So what else did you have? You had, I think, two more, right? Yeah, Seeds of Extinction, which was basically if uh, if Disney signed over the rights to Pandora <laughs> and we made it into a Halloween Horror Nights maze, that's what it would be. So you have all these like crazy plants. Um, a cool concept. Uh, some of the the scare actors looked really cool because they were like, basically like a it looked like a Venus flytrap but on stilts, and they like come out at you. Um, and when you're when you're working with like plants, it's really easy to hide people within like foliage. You know, yeah, like the, camouflage, all that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So a lot of them got me. Not because I necessarily what looked the scariest, but I just didn't ever see them coming. They were actually like hidden very well in the wall you're like yeah. literally <laughs> you're walking yeah. past the wall he's standing right there <laughs> yeah that sounded uh, that sounded it looked pretty cool too i like the a lot of the uh the interior effects that they use as far as the the actors and stuff like that and just yeah. the, the 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 way it looked at stuff overall looked awesome so that that looked actually pretty good and i know i think that was one of them that was kind of low on your list right or yeah and i, and I will say it, it didn't move up much higher uh but it wasn't it wasn't bad none of the houses really disappointed me i enjoyed every single one of them um i thought i was going to be extremely disappointed in this one and uh blumhouse but they were enjoyable so yeah. nothing this year really disappointed me too much um or at all i, I enjoyed them all in some way um but this one ha and it, there, there was also like continuity to the story so like you're stuck in this like house and then basically you're you're trying to escape you're going upstairs and then you basically choose to escape through the roof and you actually end up walking on the roof and the floor is like slanted like this and you know Halloween Horror Nights had no shame they didn't scare if you they didn't care if you twisted your ankle yeah. on the like slanted floor they came out and scared you <laughs> so it was still pretty cool I, I i honestly i was like oh i'm on a slanted floor nobody's going to like come out and scare me they they don't want to get sued, you know, and then yeah. bam, I'm like, oh, shoot. <laughs> well, I guess they don't care about a lawsuit. <laughs> yeah, right, um, yeah. So what was the last original maze we had for you guys over there? All right, so, oh, um, uh, Scary Tales. Scary Tales. So how was Scary Tales? Scary Tales had one of the cooler facades. If you saw my video, I, I put the, the clip of me entering the maze. And once again, like I, I filmed all the way through them, but we just can't post it. Um, Universal will, will flag it and get it taken off immediately. Uh, but the, the entry facade is basically the Wicked Witch of the West, her like awesome. castle, right? And she's actually flying over you. Oh, wow. Like, it's an actual scare actor on a broom, and she's like jumping over you and flying over you as you enter. Wow, that's, uh, that's awesome. I like that. Yeah. And, and you, you go through all these, like, um, fairy tales from when we were young that have been turned now into, like, horror tales. And uh, you, you see Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall and, like, it's, you walk into a room and there's egg everywhere. Um, it, you smell it, too. Um, who else did they have? The, what was it? the three little pigs. Um, you see them, but, like, in a kind of, like, a scary way. They kind of look like... They they look less like pigs and more like um what, what boars like with tusk. Nice. Uh, um, and then the the wicked witch of the of the west, and who else? I feel like there was another one. Oh yeah, the three little bears, oh, and okay. that that one was pretty cool because they had like the bear heads and they come out at you and they have like the sound effects and everything. So yeah, that one actually was uh, higher on my list than expected for nice. sure. That sounded cool. And then your last original maze was the carnival, right? Oh, damn, man. Whew, that just, one was pretty good, too. I just remember that as you were talking about this one. I was like, oh, wait, no, he's got yeah. one more. Um, yeah. That one, uh, Rust in Pieces. Oh, my God. Yeah. 
oh my god, this so it's it's only been two weeks and I'm already like reminiscing and like crying inside. No, I, you know what? I watched the video on that and the facade just alone looked cool. Um, yeah, I like the whole idea. I always like the idea of an abandoned carnival dark ride in a way. So, um, not scary farm is, does a maze right now called dark ride where it's like an event, abandoned carnival ride and stuff like that. And I've, I've just always liked the idea of like you, you're exploring this abandoned carnival ride and like a lot of the animatronics came to life and stuff like that through like a some voodoo witch stuff or something, you know. So, um, but how was that maze? So it wasn't necessarily like that, like things coming to life. It was more like carnies and clowns that are going crazy. Um, and you're in this dilapidated, rusted carnival. Um, so like imagine walking into a carnival where the Ferris wheel has like collapsed over and you're like walking under that like collapsed material. Everything's all rusted around you. Um, they have like, you know, like their old signs are there with like, you know, whatever they were presenting and it's kind of like torn up. Um, and then you got the carnies and the clowns coming out of nowhere and like jumping from the, from the like ceiling on like bungee cables and everything, um, scaring you. The facade entering that one was amazing. Um, that one, I, I think I got a little bit of it as well and posted it, but if you want to see good coverage of it, um, another guy that I met at the media event was Tim tracker and his wife. They posted up, uh, nearly like a complete walkthrough of it. So yeah. if you're not going to get to experience it and you want to see what it was like, they posted up, I, I think, I don't think they, they like broke the video down. Like, like I heard you were supposed to, they, they posted the whole thing, the, the whole way through. Yeah. Uh, and it was really good. Another person that went there this year that would kind of shocked me is, um, this guy I watch on YouTube named his name's theme park HD. And he, uh, he usually covers, uh, the only, the only one I've ever seen him cover is the Hollywood event. But this year, it's like he covered the Hollywood and Orlando event and then put up the videos at the same time. I was like, do you have people over in Orlando now that work for you? That's, like, pretty cool and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that, that maze looked cool, though. Uh, just facade-wise looked awesome, and, and I thought it was cool. Um, yeah. Now, over here, we had, of course, two different uh, exclusives. Um, well, if you want to count this third one, I'm, I'm going to get the third one out of the way, though. We have the full... Of course, year-round walking dead experience you can go through. And the only thing that usually changed for Halloween Horror Nights is more zombies in areas that they're usually not zombies at. So that's about it. I went through it just because it, it's a maze, and you know I wasn't gonna leave it out. So uh, went through that. Uh, Terror Tram this year probably killed it. Uh, they brought back Hollywood Harry from 2016, or yeah, 2016, and they gave him more of a, a they gave him more of a speaking role this time around, which I really appreciated. So that was really cool. Um, uh, and his backstory was like he has two tram hosts under uh, like uh, what is it hostage and uh, you have to get off and go through his uh, dread tales where it was like these these dogs who uh, had chainsaws and they were trying to kill you then you go into the Bates Motel which has been turned to like a, a cannibal hotel of like hillbillies and stuff like that so you see a bunch of cannibals everywhere then you go up and you do go through like this scarecrow this scarecrow kind of like maze little thing then you go through the, the infamous War of the Worlds plane crash site and you see a bunch of clowns everywhere. And then it ends with you going through um, an insane asylum of some sort. So, um, And that was pretty cool. I really enjoyed that Terror Tram and I hope they bring back Hollywood Harry or another original Terror Tram in the future. Uh, and Universal Monsters on my list killed it this year. I, I it was Like I said, it was hard to choose between this and Stranger Things, but Universal Monsters this year was just phenomenal. Uh, Universal Monsters started, of course, in a graveyard, and you go through and you're seeing all the graves of the different monsters, uh, and then you go inside this one big tomb, and in the tomb you see Frankenstein holding the little girl that he kills in the movie, and he's just repeating friend, 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 and then at one point while you're paying attention to that, the Wolfman pops out and scares you, and when you walk towards the, the last area of the graveyard, the Phantom of the Opera pops out and scares you. And then they transition from that into Dr. Frankenstein's castle. But in between that transition, you see a lot of uh, angry rioters who are just mad about Dr. Frankenstein and Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster in general. And then from there, you go inside the, the castle. And uh, it's cool the way they set it up. It's, it transitions in between each movie. And in between each transition, you see the movie poster of the movie of Frankenstein, the Wolfman, Dracula, uh, Phantom of the Opera. And it, it was just cool. The Invisible Man scene was probably one of my favorites. It was very short. Uh, he literally had one little piece of the maze, but his part was really cool. Much like how I said it was supposed to be like, or how they said it was supposed to be like a Hugh Hefner kind of look, how he looks and stuff. They looked really cool. Um, 
the Wolfman scene was really cool. The Mummy scene was awesome. Uh, just a lot of different uh, aspects of the the maze. You saw Frankenstein the most out of the maze, uh, I believe, but. Nonetheless, this maze probably killed it. And then, of course, when you went out, you went through Monster Masquerade, which was all the monsters kind of having a masquerade party, which was obviously Phantom of the Opera and Hunchback of Notre, Notre Dame. That's where that was kind of uh, inspired of. But you see, like, Frankenstein wearing a mask, Dracula, someone on steel walkers, Dracula's uh, minions and stuff like that, um, and the Phantom of the Opera, of course. But that was a really cool scare zone connected right into the maze. So right when you walked out, you went right into the scare zone, which was really cool. Um, and yeah, that was all the mazes uh, this year for Halloween Horror Nights, both Orlando. Did we get through all your? Yeah, we got through all your mazes because we talked all about the. We have a lot that work, and then we talked about your originals, and then we talked about mine. Uh, so I think the, the last thing is to do is just kind of close it out with uh, final thoughts, really, huh? Yep. Um, I'll start off if you don't mind. Go for it. Um, so. The event was what I expected of it as far as it being a great event. It definitely didn't let let me down. Um, but the introduction of Stranger Things definitely changed the event a lot. The crowds were huge. So for anybody that's going to the event, planning to go to the event, and if you've been to the event, you already know, the crowds are crazy. So expect some long wait times. Try to plan to get there earlier. Um, just just some pro tips that I'm sure Anthony knows as well. If you guys are in Orlando, Stay and Scream is a good option to get yourself in there early. But the event was great. Um, the show was was a really good show for, for what it was. Um, you'll have a great time. And I, I don't think it'll, it'll let anybody down, really. Yeah. Uh, so as far as uh, that was some good Orlando tips. As far as Hollywood tips go, um, take advantage of the early entry, especially this year, uh, being Stranger Things is one of the uh, big mazes for the event. That's what's driving a lot of the crowds, uh, especially for a lot of uh, veteran HHN goers. You know in the past it's never been this crazy. Uh, the last time it was this crazy is when they did The Exorcist. Um, but I suggest if you're going to you're gonna go to Horror Nights, just do, do in general admission. Um, do the early entry. Take advantage of that. All the backlot stuff from the Metro sets, that'd be uh, Poltergeist, First Purge, and Horrors of Blumhouse open early, uh, Trick or Treat, and Stranger Things as well. Um, so I, I know in the past I said do the Metro sets first, but I want to say kind of change that up and probably do Stranger Things first, only because um, that maze when I was going was constantly at 150 to 200 minutes, and I didn't want to... Uh, I don't want anyone to miss out on that maze, especially because that maze, they did a really good job and that is going to be awesome to see in the future. Um, also, just uh, an FYI, because I messed up on this, uh, if you're planning on bringing water to the event, don't because I brought like 10 bottles of water and they made me just get rid of them all, so don't do that. Oh, oh man. <laughs> yeah, and my cousin like watched me and his face was just like, wow, that sucks. So. Super yeah. pro yeah, I thought I was going to walk in with a bunch of water, can't bring in water. So, yeah, if you, at the Hollywood event, if you guys are trying to bring water, don't. <laughs> um, you didn't chug them all? What's up? You didn't chug them all? No. That was like 10 waters. <laughs> I offered the security guards, I was like, hey, guys, I don't want this water going away. So if you guys want it for yourselves, go for it. Um, but they're like, no, we can't take it. And then I was like, well, if anyone in the back wants it, let them have it. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, so, yeah. Um, also, if you're going to drink this year – our event is no longer dry. Our event no has way. alcohol now. So if you're going to be drinking at the events, both events, I would say, drink responsibly and don't get kicked out of the park because you are going to be missing out on one of the best uh, Halloween events of the season. So uh, like I said, just drink responsibly and uh, don't punch any of the characters because they're literally just there to do their jobs and they do a hell of a job at their job. So... <laughs> With that being said, we're going to wrap this video up to an ending. Um, thank you guys for watching another East vs. West uh, video. I uh, don't know when the next one's going to be, but we're going to plan something out in the future. So stay tuned for that. Like always, guys, thank you for joining the Madhouse. I really appreciate you, all, all your guys' support and for your subscriptions and stuff like that. Me and Eddie both appreciate all your guys' support. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.